So I'm just curious. I know, uh, you know, we're not really expecting any updates about Devin, but uh, if he's not able to play, is Jack going to start this game? You'll find out on game day. Okay. Go ahead, David. Can you just talk a little bit about how practice has gone this week and, and trying out the new quarterbacks and just how the team is sort of, you know, dealing with the situation and getting ready for Syracuse? Yeah, uh, it's been a great week of practice. The guys are excited to play a, a really good Syracuse team. Um, we're not trying out any new quarterbacks. I mean, it's the same guys we've had since training camp started. So everybody's practicing and working hard. It's uh, definitely a you know, that point of the season where you can tell we've had two really physical games. I mean, that's they're giving us everything they got, but, uh, you know, I'm proud of how they're pushing through. I think our bye week after this one will come at a good time. Um, to try to get some guys, you know, back to feeling normal, but we are going to have a healthy Tyler Baker Williams. So that's a, a very happy addition, uh, gaining him back. Outside of that, it's it's been a great week. I'm proud of these guys for how they've, you know, managed these uh, five straight night games that we've had and the number of times we've not gotten home until three in the morning and everything else. It's, it's a remarkable group. Gibby? Yeah, Coach, does the playbook change any, uh, depending on who the quarterback is? I mean, uh, all these quarterbacks, you know, went through spring drills and everything, playing, you know, doing the same playbook that, that Devin did. Does anything change really that much? Well, did you watch the game? I did, and it, yeah. Okay. okay, well, then you saw that it changed a little bit. So everyone has a different skill set, and, you know, if Devin's in the game, it's his offense. If Jack's in the game or MJ's in the game or Ben Finley's in the game, they all have things that are strengths that we'll try to play to. James? Dave, when you look at uh, Garrett Schrader this year versus last year, how much tougher is this game defending them with the way he's throwing the ball this year? Yeah, he's, he's impressive. You know, he's one of the more imp improved players I've seen this year. 70% completion rate. I went back and watched our game from last year, and, and he really struggled throwing the ball. Uh, he ran well against us. But to, to be 10 touchdowns, three interceptions, 70% completion rate, based off of what we saw last year, he's done a great job. And, and so has their staff, you know, the changes that Dino made have paid off when you look at the way Robert's running that offense and using his skill set and Tucker's still leading the ACC in rushing so it hasn't taken away from his production and just to follow up it seems their number one receiver slash tight end as an inside guy is is the Gadsden kid is that a little different than maybe something you've seen this year or is there someone you can compare it to say that again it seems their number one receiver slash tight end is Gadsden, who plays more inside slot, you know, in, in tight. Is that unique, I mean, relative to who you face this year, uh, just to have an inside guy like that be the focal point? Yeah, ECU had a couple guys in the slot that were really good players, you know. Um, but Gadsden plays everywhere. They move them around. I mean, that's – you know, if you look at Robert and I's offense at Virginia, he did the same thing. He moved players all over the field and found ways to get them the ball and motion them. And, made it hard for you to locate him and isolate, you know, one player on him to stop him. I think Robert does a good job with that schematically, and Gadsden's definitely their target. Uh, I mean, their second leading receiver is the tailback, you know, so at the wide receiver position, Gadsden's very important to them, and we need to know where he is. Thanks, Dave. You bet. All right. I know y'all have more questions. All right, Rob. Okay, I was thinking uh, Syracuse, I don't know how where they were projected preseason, but are you surprised at their success that they're having so far? Um, they've got a lot of players back. You know, I said this multiple times in the offseason when asked about the Atlantic division. Whenever you have a starting quarterback back, which all of us do in the Atlantic, it allows you to improve your roster dramatically differently than when you don't. And so I'm not surprised that any of these teams that return their starting quarterback are better because they're not worried about that piece of their offense. You know, you can do a lot of other things. And um, we have the same thing, unfortunately for us, you know, losing Trent Penix um, was a big blow. 
you know, for, for our offense, when you talk about getting better, you look at what's going on up there. They've been very healthy uh, offensively. And I think Schrader was, you know, year one in, in that system. Now he's year two with the new OC. And Dino is a very resilient guy. Like, I have a ton of respect for him. Um, he's a program builder. He did it at Eastern Illinois. He did it at Bowling Green. He's done it at Syracuse now twice. And, you know, doesn't surprise me that they're playing the way they are.